when wing that wings bit the dust the dream uh, of those guys produced in early mark spitfires obviously died with it but obviously they produced a new company katore and we've started to get or we are getting early mark spitfires so this dream is very much alive uh, the kit looks extraordinary in the box uh, the Tamiya 32 Spitfires are very very good indeed probably the well I'd say the best but well, they are the best up until now um, they do feel just like model kits whereas this kit oozes attention and there's lots of love in this kit lots of love for the Spitfire uh, you can tell quite easily you only have to look and look at the instructions themselves that these are absolutely fantastic I've been reading this uh, instruction booklet now for a couple of weeks um, and I'm finding more and more stuff in it uh, just amazing quite remarkable I was looking at the decal sheet today and it's just well it's, it's well there's lost for words really uh, anyway, talking about being lost for words you don't want to hear me yakking on about it I think we ought to um, have a go at it don't you so all I've done up to now, literally, is cut all this off off the sprues. Um, there's even some sprue left on, on the side walls. And um, the bits I can clip together are clipped together. And that is not with any glue whatsoever. Well, that's not too bad at all, is it? Isn't that good? So um, what we're going to do, we're going to follow the instructions to the letter. Um, and what they suggest the the spitfires were, were, were painted were the they were grey primed um, and then they were silver painted and uh, they use this supermarine green which they do um, Katori they do supply like a paint mix so we'll um, we'll have a go at that in a minute so but yeah that's that's um you know for something that's got no glue what the only thing I've glued here is the seat in its frame. Uh, and this little piece here, which is screwed to this bulkhead there, and all the oh, and these obviously the um, the headrest and the and the voltage accumulator thing. Uh, other than that, it's all um, I could drop that and it all falls apart. Well, I obviously don't want to do that, but uh, not bad at all. Obviously, the spade grips the orders. Uh, you can see that. Instructions are calling here for for this um, super interior green, which is different from the your standard uh, BS um, uh, what you'd normally use. I would normally go with go with the um, grey green MLP, or I might use uh, Mr. Color. That's what I'd normally go with. But obviously, because this is a specific color, uh, and uh, because Katori. <laughs> know everything about the early mark spitfires we're going to follow the, their instructions obviously because they obviously know more than i do so this uh super in, uh super interior green is one part xf 71 which you probably you could get away with there's a standard color in uh, british color and um this park uh park green x28 so what i've done with with come up with this colour here which isn't that far I guess not too far is it obviously bearing in mind uh, the photography and all the rest of it so uh, yeah so I'm kind of happy with that one so we'll go with this he said oh no I'll probably even put my label on it supermarine green so mm, any early mark spitfires now that I um that I build will be um will have this colour inside. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna prime all me all me um cockpit area and uh, and then we'll come back and then we'll see where we go, see where we are with this stuff.
So with the, the main build complete, uh, we get this. We get this perfect, <laughs> perfect Spitfire, uh, in my humble opinion. Um, uh, if that doesn't look like a Spitfire to you, then I don't know what does. It's absolutely extraordinary. So what we've got on here, we've got, you get two canopies in the kit. So this one here is the, um, the enclosed canopy. So I'm using that as a mask, basically. Uh, the obviously I'm gonna have the the door open and the canopy slid back. So, but that's in over there somewhere, uh, masked up and ready to be sprayed up. And so is uh, the model. So what we're gonna do uh, now? We're gonna give it a bit of a wash with some I don't know something, um, soap and water or something. Get it all cleaned up. It's all a bit grimy absolutely amazing um, it's all a bit wants a bit of a clean and then we'll get her primed and then we'll get her sprayed up in um, her colors um, which will be probably uh, what will we have probably model color I guess I think we'll go with that so um, let's get over to the spray booth and get her primed I won't show you priming you, we all know what priming looks like but it'll be a gray primer I think um, or I might take a little rain check and have, a, and have another thing, maybe black, don't know. But um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get it cleaned up and get it sprayed up.
Declan Complete um, and another uh, coat of uh, Tamiya X22 gloss. Uh, this is what we get. Decals went down absolutely uh, superbly well. Really nice. A little bit thin, I guess. But no, really good. Settled down lovely. Uh, yeah, very, very good indeed. Um, we could talk about these colour codes if you wanted to. Um, for me, yes, it's a bit of a shock that they're that the colour they are. You'd think, oh well, <clears throat> this is a bit of a shock. But I'm going to go with um, whatever Katori <laughs> um, come up with. There is so much detail and care and love gone into this uh, into this project that that decision to colour these that colour would not be taken lightly. Um, I've got a little feeling that Richard and his team must have some information that they uh, that they were this. I don't know what you call that—a light blue colour. So I think we're going to be quite happy and go with it. So what's going to be next is going to be a wash. I think we're going to go with, for the first time in a long, long time, we're going to go with a little clay wash, um, just for a bit of a change. Um, so I think we'll just go and slap that on now and, and see what we get. <laughs> 